This week, I wanted to do some more CNC milling. This time, it's a case for the Raspberry Pi 3. I came up with this faceplate concept. Since I can't do overhangs with a three axis CNC, it'll be a separate piece that will be cut out of acrylic and laid flat on the bed. I didn't want to use screws to fit the two halves together, so I made an inner lip that will hold the piece together with friction. I also wanted to use acrylic for this top piece. This way it'll sort of be like a window so you can see inside of the case. So here's the material I used for this project. It's some acrylic and some hard wood. So for the bottom half of the case, I used some hard maple and started by facing the material using a 1 8 inch flat end mill. This stock is about a half of an inch thick, so it didn't take too long. To shell out the stock, I used a 3D pocket and limited the machining boundary to just the outside of the case. The step down is set to one millimeter, so there's a lot of passes, but this kept the tool safe from too much load. There was a lot of swarf, so I figured I would clean it up before starting the next operation. I ran a 2D contour to cut out the case, starting from the top of the stock, again using a step down of just a millimeter. I switched out the tool for a 132 inch flattened mill. This drilled out the holes in the standoffs with a 2D pocket. When it was time to remove it from the bed, I had to be really careful not to break the part. For the top half of the case, I used some hard oak. This stock was about 3 fourths of an inch thick, so I had to do a whole lot of facing on this one. But the fibers are pretty awesome, kind of looks like an Easter egg basket. After that, I ran a 3D pocket to shell out the stock. This one had some pretty interesting tool paths because there's a lot of openings, like for the ports on the Raspberry Pi. There's also an inner lip along the edge that will slide into the bottom half of the case. Then a 2D contour to finish outlining the part. To finish the inner cutout, I switched the tool out for a 132 inch flattened mill. This gave me the sharp corners that I needed to make the cutout for the acrylic window. There was a lot of burrs on the edges, so I had to do a good amount of sanding to clean this part up. So I'm using this acrylic for making the two face plates. This stuff is about an eighth of an inch thick. I used a 1 16th inch flat end mill to make the cutouts, and these pockets are really shallow. The step down is just 200 microns deep, so that's 0.2 millimeters. The spindle speed maxes out at 2600 RPM, which is recommended for cutting acrylic. This pink swarf kind of looks a bit like cotton candy. Doesn't smell like it though. This 80 degree engraving bit makes some decent chamfers. These are along the edge of the cutouts on the faceplate. A Little bit of the Adafruit branding on the center here on the top window. Alcohol makes a pretty good releaser for the double-sided tape. This just made it a lot easier to remove the part. Here's what everything looks like after inhaling lots of sawdust. The faceplate has a pretty tight fit, so it held nicely in place. The pipe sits right on top of the standoffs, and all the ports actually lined up thanks to all those 3D printing projects that I've done. Four machine screws secure the pie to the standoffs. The top half of the case and the acrylic window didn't have a tight fit, so it just didn't hold in place. So I had to use some E6000 and glue the two pieces together. The two halves fit pretty well together and they have a tight hold. I really like this pink acrylic, it looks really nice with this wood. I really like the separate faceplate, it's a great way to get around those overhangs and this way I can have some holes instead of these large open cutouts. It's always a good idea to test your cutouts. Looks like it fits here, but that's because I'm only showing the cables that did. The cutout for the SD card could be a little bit bigger, but I was able to get it in and out without too much hassle. And that's pretty much it. I really like how this turned out, but probably for next time, I'm gonna try to face both the top and the bottom of the stock because this one's actually a little bit warped. If you guys have any questions about this project, you can let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the Adafruit channel for new DIY projects every week.